Hello everyone, Cole here. I'd like to do a, haven't done a video in a while because I'm just so busy with other things, but I'd like to do a quick little video on crimping, grooming, shaping, making your plants grow a certain way by doing them things here. And uh, here we go. So I like my plants to grow more out and I also like them to produce more than what they normally would if you just did nothing and just let them grow. Also, um, I uh, like to have my plants clean and I don't like muddy leaves or anything like that and I'll tell you why and we'll do this. So here we go. So what I like to do, and this is a sativa dominant hybrid. This is uh, some um, fruity pebbles here. Uh, what I like to do is I like to have a bunch of branches and canopies out and then turn every branch into a mother branch, meaning you'll get more big buds, more, you know, a, more weight, you'll get a higher yield, you'll definitely increase your yield doing this. And you will also cut down on the deadly and horribly infamous brittosis, which actually doesn't happen so much with sativa and sativa dominant hybrids because, you know, sativa is just very thin and lengthy and it goes out. Um, but absolutely with indicas and especially with my favorite um, median to work in as a canna artist and that's kush um, Part of the part of the trick to being able to grow kush and get those really 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 big buds Which are really really susceptible to brittosis. Um, I have quite a few tricks and we'll go through that as we go through this grow and then um, really kick things going um, and we'll touch base on that um, eventually uh, but right now I want to talk about how to get your plants to grow the way you want them to grow and that's what's really great about well weed because you know marijuana cannabis um, You know and all varieties and everything at the end of the day. It's a weed, you know It'll suck up all nutrition. It'll eat it fast It'll do several things and it'll grow any which way you can move the plant you can do all kinds of really cool things and uh, I want to talk about that today so here we are, we're back at our sativa. And what I'm doing very simply is I'm taking out anything lower or anything that touches the dirt. Now, the reason why I don't like dirty leaves and everything is because the leaves are the lungs of the plant, obviously. Um, and and, and uh, so I feel that if anything's dirty or damaged or anything, then it's like, it's like work trying to work with a crippled lung. And so it's best to just remove it because the plant will just grow more. Now what's really, really cool is um, right under here, and it'll be right here, there are these little vulva looking, I know, um, uh, tiny microscopic little mouths. And that's where cannabis breathes. It actually breathes right in here. Now it absorbs the, you know, radiant solar energy here from the leaf pads and everything. So these are the solar panels, but under here, these are the mouths. The mouths are right there in between each and every little stem that goes into this, you know, major stem. And so, uh, if you'll notice, during the day, marijuana, she'll have her, they'll have their leaves up. So they're absorbing and they're, they're actually in the process of doing this, breathing in. And then at night, you'll notice all your leaves will drape and fall. And that's when marijuana is exhaling. So um, that's why I like to keep it out of the dirt. I like to keep it all the ways. Plus, you know, if you're using bacterias and beneficial things, remember they're also expunging and exhausting. You know, your dirt is breathing too, believe it or not. Marijuana's roots also breathe. And we'll, and we'll get into that a, a little bit later as time progresses. I'm just slowly growing these plants. I've been keeping them in a bit of a stasis using some CO2 so I can buy myself some time and handle some other projects and things like that. Um, so yes, so right now at this stage, I want marijuana, my plants to go up. So I'm going to also, that's another reason why I'm also removing these. And it also causes the stalk to swell, callus, and get bigger and bulkier and stronger. But for this purposes, we're not really having to worry about wind or, and things like that so much because, well, I'm not going to grow outdoor cannabis. It's just frivolous. It's, it's, you know, it don't get me started. Tangent material. Um, but yeah, um, so this callusing and everything, it'll bulk up your stock, it'll make it stronger. Also, what really makes your, your stock strong, like if you're worried about wind and you're growing outdoors, is rough them up when you're watering, give them some love, move them around, feed them. Believe it or not, this actually stimulates the cellular growth in the cells. They make sturdy stock stuff. I know Emerald Harvest does. 
Um, and I am a fan of Emerald Harvest when it comes to anything synthetic for newts and everything. Um, it, uh, that's really good. If you're using organic um, compounds and stuff, and I have some, uh, some, um, some brands that I like that I'll post uh, later on in some videos, um, you really don't need to worry about that because there's like a really green, there's an alginate and some stuff like that. That really does really good wonders for this. But what you can do is you can agitate it and touch it and move it when you're watering. That really helps. And also what really helps, of course, is another reason why I have, see that back there, these fans? See them all the way up there? See them oscillating? These are off, obviously, because I'm, you know, don't need too many fans yet. But look at what the fan is doing right there. So just like Willy Wonka's um, chocolate waterfall, you know how it's turning the chocolate? Well, this fan in this air with just this gentle breeze I, um, is, it's strengthening the cannabis. It's, it's, it's making it more stronger, residual, and able to do things. Um, but of course, we're gonna end up trussing. I'm gonna show you my method of trussing and a few other things um, later on in some videos and when we get down the road. But now I'm getting things warmed up, no CO2, pushing nutrients, things are going, and that's why I'm clipping and grimming. So also, I like to have the inside, if you notice here, how clean everything in the inside is. This will actually really help you out and help you cut down on vertosis uh, in the flowering stage and later flowering stage. I like to be able to have air come through here because I'll, I'll put fans on the bottom ground here and I'll have them push air through the inside of the plant. And so there's no obstruction here. I'm able to push air through the plant and help it cycle out. Also, it really, really makes things difficult for the most famous cannabis pest, aphids. Aphids really are not a fan of sunlight. They're really not a fan of high spectrum anything. Um, yes, the females, it doesn't bother them because, you know, um, because you know they're they're always exposed they're the mobile ones so for those of you who don't know about aphids male aphids are the ones that do all the eating the chewing the destroying um and they're also the ones who don't have any wings it's up to the female aphids to transport the males and you know of course get fertilized by them to move the eggs and everything um, and it's funny because if you like pick a leaf off and throw it on the ground and you don't kill the aphids that are on there They'll send a distress signal and the females will come and pick them up and then bring them back to the plant It's it's they're you know, they're ravenous little suckers um, But yeah, they, they they just they don't care too much for sunlight a cloudy day is really an aphids happy day That's why you'll notice aphids you'll always see them under the leaves and all through there and just eating um, if you clean out like I did here, you'll rarely see them on the main stem. They'll, they'll, they'll purposely come up and move themselves to the leaves, which in my opinion makes them easier for you to just squish them with your hands and kill them. Um, but I have some other great control methods. I know a lot of people like to use um, ladybugs. Um, I have in the past, uh, but I don't recommend it. Uh, maybe for outdoor, it's okay-ish. But if you're doing any sort of hoop house, greenhouse, or a legitimate indoor, you don't want them because they poop. And they're gonna poop all over your buds, and then you're gonna fail your yeast, and then you're not gonna be able to sell your weed. Uh, well, you're gonna have to pay more money and get it retested. But just for that part, in the state of Colorado, you don't have to retest everything um, that's required, the four basic things, metals, pesticides, potency, microbials. So microbial is the one thing that people fail a lot of. Thank goodness. I don't like hearing about um, people failing pesticides because believe it or not, it's still legal to take a crop that's failed pesticide and get it blasted into wax. So you're just concentrating it and then, yeah, then ugh, be careful of concentrates, especially because I've been seeing a lot of concentrate labs recently last week where they are filthy, muddy floors, unfinished walls, dirt everywhere, stuff falling into the oil, but yet people are buying it and you're vaping it because it's just, there's no, the health department has no regulation here. It, it sucks. So it's, so be careful with concentrates once again, not just because of how strong they are or what they're doing, or if someone doesn't perch the gas right, you know, those tests and lab exams usually, usually capture and grab that stuff, but for plain just, just unhealthy, just dirt and conditions and ugh, it's, it's just nasty. Um, but you know, part of preventing that is keeping all this out of the dirt and also keeping your leaves, everything, keeping it all touched out of the dirt, um, will also help keep you, um, 
from having to worry about failing your microbials. Now, eventually, and when I, when I transplant these to their, their final um, pots and, and uh, for all the way the rest of their life, I'm going to do what's known as cropping my plant, which is also a big, big, big part of increasing your yield. Um, so what I'll do is I'll come and I'll actually see this part right here. I will probably cut right there, which will cause this to become a branch, this to become a major branch, and everything else to become a major branch. So cutting this right here will also, have you noticed, you know, cutting here makes, forces the plant to go upwards. Cutting here will force the plant to go outwards. And that's what we want. We want big, bushy plants. Because the more of these nodes that you see, each and every one of these, in the end, right when you're getting ready to adjust your light cycle and take marijuana to its their final lifespan, each one of these is going to become your buds. This is gonna be your fruit. And so the more of these you have, the more fruit you'll have. And the more fruit you have exposed to your intensity of light and everything, um, you will, uh, it'll be more potent. Uh, now another, let's say your marijuana just refuses to get bushy and, uh, you know, you, you know, it's big, it's set, it's taken up the room or it's, it's, you know, and, you, and you're ready to go it, but you don't have a lot of nodes just yet. So a little trick that I like to use, and you'll notice this is on every single light, um, unless of course you're using HPS high sodium pressure. Um, you would be switching the light bulb. You'll notice that there's two different things on the lights and there's a switch that says veg, V-E-G, and a switch that says blue. Um, now, right now, obviously, we're only operating on the veg spectrum, which is designed to make the plant crave the light, keep growing, keep working out. Also, the 18 hours of light that's on is, you know, it's, it's, in, the, it's in a long light stage, it's just gonna grow, grow, grow. But if you need to get some, some nodes out and make that happen, a little trick, and it's very simple, go ahead and turn on your bloom light, okay? Now, we've, now, that, now that you turn the, excuse me, brain fart, you bloom, now that your bloom light's on, but keep your light, um, your light timing the same 18 hours or longer if, if desired for your veg. Just keep it at that veg timing. What this will do is it'll actually stunt the plants from actually growing more, but they'll grow out. They will, they will end up just making all kinds of just bushy, bushy, super thick nodes. So be careful, like if you do it for a week or two weeks, you're gonna come in and you're gonna be like, wow, this is exceedingly thick, it's insane, and it will get out of control fast. But it will get you your nodes. For some odd reason, with that additional a uh, special spectrum that's that's actually indicative of fall, but yet the but yet the light is still going all day. It, it, it's kind of tricky to the plants, so be careful with how long you do it. I recommend eight days at the most, and you will you will get some results. Also, make sure you give it a little bit extra of a plant tonic if you're using it. Me, if I was going with emerald, it would be um, some emerald goddess, of course, and of course the bloom. Uh, give it lots of bloom boosters. Um, best bloom booster on planet earth uh right now from is from humble county zone i mean just family owned business been around forever legends in my opinion and the best part is if you have any questions or whatever you can call and you could end up speaking to a family member who actually is in ownership of that business it's it's an outstanding company but there's a product called sonic bloom and we will get into the use of it and working with it because I swear by it. I love Sonic Bloom and of course, Snowstorm Mulch are the greatest Terrapin booster ever made. And yes, I have tried every single one of them on the market. Um, I have tested them all. Uh, definitely get yourself some Snowstorm Ultra. I know it's a little pricey, but do you wanna smoke through all your weed and then have to end up spending you know, right now, top shelf is $320 an ounce here in Colorado. Kansas City, it's $500. And that's if you can find it, you know? So, yeah, you gotta, you know, you, you wanna smoke good weed, you're gonna have to put in the good effort and the good ingredients. Don't skimp on this, people. Trust me, Sonic Bloom, Snowstorm Ultra, outstanding. 
Um, and there's some other, there's maybe one other Terrapin booster, Bud Candy. Bud Candy, they've been around for a while, and it's decent, it's pretty good. But anyway, so to get, remember to get nodes, keep your light cycle at veg for timing, and just turn on the bloom no more than eight days, and you'll node out. So here we have an indica dominant, and you'll notice it's kind of sticking into its guns and it's not going out yet. That's because I'm still growing this up and out. So when it comes time to crop, we'll cut right there. See where my fingernail is? Not hurting this node or this node. These will become outstanding branches. So be careful, use some needle, needle, needle nose scissors and just get it right there. And then everything will start to come out. And then we'll move on to the next stage, which will be trussing and weaving your plants into the net. I hope this helps out and uh, kind of gives you an idea on shaping and growing your plants as they move throughout their life. And one more thing that's also really cool that you can do, um, because marijuana, it really is, it's like putty. You like, you can sculpt with it. it, it it's really cool. So let's say you are in an apartment or a townhome or you're in one of those, you're in suburbia and you don't want your neighbors to see your plants or anything. What you can do is you can put your plant right here next to your fence line and then you can nail, uh, hammer in some nails and bend them or some hooks and set, bend them like this, okay? You can then, as your plant grows, move it and set it like this. So see, this is rigid. You take the soft parts and you just put them around the hooks and then you can lay the plant through the hooks and the whole thing will grow like this and then the branches, the secondaries, will come and they'll just grow up along the lines of fence and then you can just cut everything off the top. So if this is the top of your fence and your marijuana's here, so you, you've got your stem now growing here and it's sustained by like a hook holding it just like it is this conduit and then they'll just come up like this and then you just snip them before they get here. And then, yeah, no one will know. They'll smell it, but no one will know it's there. That's what's so cool about cannabis. I mean, it's, it's really forgiving. You can work with it. You can screw it, screw up with it. You could step on it and it'll still come back depending on how hard you stepped on it, of course. Um, but know this, these plants are shapeable and workable. Also, if let's say your plants are in too close together and they're not getting enough carbon carbon monoxide and everything, you can also cut them like you're in a cloner by slipping these things down and cutting the leaves like this and making it more flat. You know, sky's really the limit with what you can do. See how I bent it a little and it'll probably grow, but it'll snap back unless it's being consistently held down, of course. Now, something else I want to show you here because I purposely am trying to make a little bit of mistakes here on some things so I can show you with what, what things look like when they're doing this. So you'll notice how there's some curl and some ruffle here on these leaves. This is what happens when you have too much nitrogen. So the cool thing is, is with nitrogen you can easily back off. And with, um, with um, uh, professional and even novice lines of uh, nutrients and everything, you know, you're gonna have a bloom, you'll have a grow, you'll have so. So you'll have ingredients uh, that you can work with that don't have any nitrogen in them, but have the potassium and phosphate that cannabis just loves. And so you can feed with just those. You don't have to use the entire line. You do not have to follow the instructions. And in fact, don't follow the instructions, okay? Most of those instructions, even for flowering, are only rigging you for eight to 10 weeks for flowering. Strawberry cough takes like 14 to 18 weeks sometimes to get a good flower on. You know, a lot of your sativa dominance, they will take longer to flower. So don't follow that one size fits all plan unless you're growing cannabis that can fall into that category. Strands like Green Crack will fall into that category, White Widow, uh, Girl Scout Cookie you can't go wrong with, Sunset Sherbet, Gelato, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of sativas and sativa pures out there um, they require a little bit extra long flowering time. And a trick to getting some, one of the many tricks you can do, and if you use in combination with what I'm gonna talk about in later videos, um, another trick to getting some bigger buds and every, uh, higher yields out of your sativas is actually doing um, uh, uh, 13 off and 11 on for your light. So, but we'll touch base on that later. I hope everything helps. I hope this video finds you all well. 
take care and look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Bye.